It all started in a chiropractor's office somewhere in Midtown about 20 years ago. I had an appointment with Dr. Wunderschnecker, a world-renowned scoliosis specialist. He made me strip down to my underwear and wait like an asshole in a small, cold room. Then he ordered some very unfriendly nurse to take my measurements and shoot all my x-rays. The woman told me specifically not to lean, but I chose to ignore her. I quickly learned this was a big mistake. Yeah, well, you know, judging from the x-rays, your son will have to wear the back brace for about, oh, let's say, 10 years, give or take. Otherwise, he will spend the rest of his life getting countless operations, painful, disgusting operations, and being confined to a wheelchair. <clears throat> would you like a candy, Andy? My parents took detailed notes on the doctor's prognosis, laminated them, posted them on the refrigerator, and then made me refer to them every time I would dare complain about getting a back brace. Mom, Dad, you can't make me put on one of those freaking things. You little brat. You should thank your lucky stars. I would rip my heart from my chest for the opportunity to wear a customized plastic girdle. But was I so lucky? No. Hey, Andy, it sure beats surgery. I was fit for a back brace the following week. Hanging buck naked from a wall as nurses wrapped me from armpit to penis in plastic gauze was bad enough. But did they really have to display me in front of the whole waiting room? <laughs> oh, Andy, stop your fetching. Who notices? You'd think it was an iron lung. Now put your pants on, sweetie. All the way home, I contemplated throwing open the back door and hurling myself into speeding traffic. Hey, look on the bright side, Andy. Somebody mugs you, the knife gets stuck in the back brace, causing you no harm. David, look at you, making a joke. Very funny. <laughs> no harm. I remember my first day at school wearing that damn thing. I stumbled down the hallways looking like the Tin Man. Then, in homeroom, Jade Quackenbush asked, Why do you walk around like you have a pole up your ass? And I knew it was going to be some day. As if Jade Quackenbush's inquiry wasn't bad enough. My gym coach, Mr. Hayson, had to top it off by giving me that damn nickname. Hey, plug butt, Paul ass, you're moving too slow, again! Then, three things happened that would torment me for years to come. First, on the way to science, I fell down and couldn't get up. I flopped around helplessly until finally the school janitor pushed me over with a broomstick. <sighs> Second, in social studies, I was the center of a new game. But I really had no idea that it involved my back brace and darts. Third, during math class, I felt an emergency coming on. Oh, no. It was a number two. I so I grabbed the bathroom pass and ran. Not now. But I couldn't Come undo on, I my do brace this. fast enough and Come consequently on. did the unthinkable. Oh, no. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, may I have your undivided attention, please? Uh, could you please refrain from making fun of Mr. Andrew London today? He has to wear a dress because he accidentally soiled his clothes. <laughs> you suck! After school that day, I made a pact with myself to smoke enough cigarettes to grow tumors the size of watermelons. If my parents were going to force me to grow up handsome and straight, by God, I was going to get lung cancer before their wish came true. Late one night, God paid me a visit, disguised as an eraser. We had it out. God, how can you do this to me? I just want to be an ordinary teenager. I'm sorry, my son, but you are one of my chosen ones. Are you saying being shaped like Humpty Dumpty is some sort of privilege? Not exactly, my son. God! I'm begging you, please, get some other schmuck to wear this thing. Just not me. I am sorry, but tough shit, my son. After my bout with God, I started hiding my brace in a pit that I dug in my backyard. It certainly eased some of the ridicule I was getting at school, but nonetheless, without my brace on, all my clothes were about a hundred times too large. How about you and me sharing a fribble? <laughs> <laughs> no. Anyway, I kept up this routine of burying my brace until my father discovered the pit. Ah! Ow, that hurt. Hey, Andy, I found your brace. But the story really ends when I finally outsmarted Dr. Wunderschnecker. Are you sure you are standing straight and natural? Yes, I'm sure. Oh, well, uh, then, uh, wunderbar. 
You're cured. <laughs> Prior to my annual examination, I vigorously trained in the art of standing erect. <laughs> so now, 20 years later, people ask me if the story is true. Yep. Every single word of it. That fucking brace was almost the death of me. But, for better or worse, it also made me who I am.